Welcome to Richard Maybe Presents. Hello, YouTube friends. This is Richard Maybe with Richard Maybe Presents um, at home. And uh, I was in the midst of reading uh, an old Richie Rich comic book. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Ta da! I was reading this comic book. Got about halfway through it. Watching an old Twilight Zone, uh, season one, episode five, Walking Distance. Uh, my sister is at a, I don't know exactly what they call it, Ladies Circle, Ladies Guild meeting at the church. And I'm halfway through, uh, I think, uh, what was his name? Um, Gil. Um, I forget his name now. Anyway, uh, in walking distance, you know, this uh, fellow is an ad executive and he's, uh, I think, 35 years old and he's all frazzled and worn out. So he comes to this town and his uh, car is on the blink. So he has a fellow, uh, I think it's called um, Homeville. I forget what it was now. Anyway, he says that the fellow says, uh, I haven't been back there in 20 years. Is it walking distance, but it was the town he grew up in. But he goes back there and everything's like it was when he was a kid. So it was kind of, you know, I got halfway through. I'm, I'm reading the Richie Rich comic book. I'm halfway through the Twilight Zone episode. I said, hey, I, I'll do a YouTube episode. You know, I haven't done a YouTube episode in a while. So, um... A lot of things on my mind. Oh, I got, uh, I don't know if I ever showed my YouTube friends. This, uh, my sister bought me this Batman mug for Christmas. And this is really cool. Now, that's the front of it. And here's the back. And it's filled with Earl Grey tea. Yeah, I like Earl Grey tea. So, um, I'm just a, a, a myriad of things. Just to kind of sit and chat with my YouTube friends, you know. Um, strange things going on in my neighborhood. We got here, we, we came here in uh, June of 2008. So we're going on 15 years here in this house. And um, the neighborhood's changing dramatically. Um, that since, I guess, since maybe since October of last year, um, this is very sad. Um, some people have passed away. Some people have sold their homes and moved up north and are now living with their kids, their adult children, I should say. And some have um, moved south, you know, very far south to the newer sections of the villages. And, um, there was, you know, situations where you know, the couple and, you know, one of the two passes. So that's another dimension. And uh, right now there's a few, quite a few, not quite a few, there's a few houses up for sale in, in, in my little neighborhood. So the dynamic, the feel is changing. And it's just a funny feeling. Like, um, I've been here 15 years. And um, I don't know. I'm kind of homesick for another time, another place. And I over 600 YouTube episodes focusing on... Now we are, um, we are northern, middle, central Florida. <laughs> Basically the villages going north to um, Ocala, uh, south Leesburg, and then Wildwood and Oxford and that, you know, pretty much that's, you know, capturing the essence, the feeling of that, of this little section of central Florida. So 600 episodes, you know, I kind of 
kind of captured it. Um, so there's a feeling the job is done, you know, and I'm thinking maybe Pennsylvania, West Virginia, possibly New Jersey. It's just New Jersey is so expensive, um, just property tax alone. So, um, yeah, you know, just just thinking about things. 15 years is a long time, you know. And uh, I'm kind of homesick a little bit. The other day I listened to uh, an old Merle Haggard record. I think this is one of Merle Haggard's single best albums. I got this in my bought this in my senior year of high school. I was working at the ShopRite in Lincoln Park in the produce aisle, and, and uh, I think <laughs> I think this was uh, they had a department store discount department store called Bradley's. I think I paid a dollar ninety nine for this. <laughs> one of that, one of, in my opinion, one of Merle Haggard's best albums: uh, "Soldier's Last Letter," "Shelley's Winter Love," "Jesus Take a Hold," "I Can't Be Myself," "I'm a Good Loser," "Side Two," "Sidewalks of Chicago," "No Reason to Quit," "If You've Got Time," the classic, "The Farmer's Daughter," and "I've Done It All." Just a great. And he titled the he titled um, the album Hag, just a, I, and a great picture of, of Merle Haggard. You know, I miss Merle Haggard. I, I like, I, I like, I've, I've, I've liked Merle Haggard since uh, I was in high school. And um, a lot of you may be wondering, and a lot of you may not be wondering, <laughs> what book I'm reading right now. And I think I think I've read this. I think this is the twentieth reading of this book. And I got this book in, in 1962 for my birthday in September uh, from my dad's only sister, my Aunt Vi. And she used to always call me Dickie, you know, but that's okay. Um, so, and here it is in, uh, inscribed here, um, 1962. Uh, to Dickie, Lovey, and Vi, and it is uh, Eagle Scout. I think it's closer. I probably read this book about 25 times. And uh, when I had rheumatic fever when I was 12 years old, I read this book cover to cover. Uh, I, I, for, for one year of my life, my feet didn't touch the ground, and I was in and out of the hospital five or six times. They used to pump penicillin in you, right in, you know, just pump it into your vein when you're in the hospital. But... I read this book at least five or six times in, when I was 12 years old when I had rheumatic fever in seventh grade. And it, it, it gave me the inspiration, the dedication, the motivation uh, to become an Eagle Scout. Basically, this book was a very, very important component of the inspiration for me to become an Eagle Scout. So I'm reading it again, uh, written by Brock Burnett. Haven't read it, maybe... No, oh, it's a Bronk, Bronk oh, I always get this mixed up. It's by Wilfred McCormick. It's a Bronk Burnett story. <laughs> I'm getting old. So, um, yeah, and I just, I just noticed in this, in this book, there was a picture, and this is totally improv. This is totally random in the moment, but this is a, a photo of the, the forest. I'm getting a feedback here. I just want, there, um, no, 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 there it goes. This is the, a photo of the forest um, behind the old Maybe Homestead in Lincoln Park. This forest is now gone, and they have these. Um, we used to, we, in Jersey, we, we used to call them McMansions. They have all. They must have built about twenty homes back there, and uh, uh, kind of sad. Um, well, it's, you know, I mean, people say it's progress, you know, but, but some of those trees were, they had to be a hundred years old. They're just, you know, huge, huge trunks. I mean, huge trunks and just skyscraper high, you know, and it's really sad. Oh, um, I can't say enough good things 
If you are in Central Florida and you like comic books, I don't know when the next show is going to be, but you can go on uh, thecomicbookconnection.com. I'll show it to you here. Uh, Joe Peace uh, runs these comic book shows in his backyard. He's got this huge, like it's a ranch. It's like Bonanza. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the Ponderosa. It's got this huge, it has a lake on it and everything. But um, uh, he, he has about um, one, two, three, four. He has four or five of these big circus tents. And one of them is for toys. One of them is for the 50 cent boxes, you know, 50 cent comic books. The other is like what I call the, the high end, uh, you know, the CGC where they're slabbed in plastic. And uh, that, the, that's the really high end comic books, you know, the rare, rare comic books, um, kind of out of my league. <laughs> and then there's kind of another tent uh, and they're the um, like, Mid, 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 like middle range condition to like fine, very fine condition comic books. And you get some really good deals. Archie's, old Charlton's, um, you know, the superhero comics. And um, personally, I don't care. I, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't really care if it's mint or near mint. Um, I just, I wrote, yeah, I wrote the pages there. <laughs> That's all I care about. I wrote the pages there. So, um, yeah, the, the comic book connection. I can't, I can't, I can't give enough praise for this, for these, for this show. This is, it's about every three months. So, um, you can, um, go on the comic book connection and then hit one of the buttons and then you'll be, um, you know, they'll, they'll send you emails, you know, when, when the, so the comic, that's it, the comicbookconnection.com. Great, 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 great comic book shows. I mean, good fellowship, you know, and every, you know, like the, like one, the, the last, I think it was the last time or the time before, there was a chap there, he's looking for Green Lantern. So there's about, there's about four or five of us helping him out looking for, you know, like if we're flipping through, I'm, I'm flipping through looking for Batman and Superman and Spider-Man. And I, if I found a green, hey, hey, I found a Green Lantern, you know, why not? You know, it's all, you know, there's no Democrat, there's no Republican, there's no left wing, there's no right wing. It's just people getting together and looking for comic books and having fun and having a good time. So can't stress it enough, the comic book connection. And I don't get, I'm not getting any, uh, what do they call that? Um, what's a Barney, Barney Fife word? Uh, re, re, remuneration? <laughs> Renumer, I don't know. You know, I'm not getting any, any, anything for it. I just, that's just, in, you know, good guy, Joe Peace, good guy, good comic book show, fun, fellowship, get some good deals on comic books. All right, here it is. The, uh, the kind of the, you know, this is the, this was the on. This was the um, the uh, sprinkling intros, and um, here's the meat and potatoes. <laughs> okay, this is a National Geographic magazine from August 1940. Andy Griffith and Andy Andy Taylor and Barney Fife's favorite magazine that they read at Floyd's Barbershop. There it is, National Geographic, August 1940. Look at that, August 1940. Well, there's a story behind this issue of National Geographic. About two weeks before moving out of the old homestead in Lincoln Park and then moving out to central Pennsylvania, there's always like this little bit, um, my throat's going sore. I just didn't realize. I still, I still got the price. I still got the price thing on the box. I, I don't dare show. I still got the price thing on it. I got this for Christmas. So anyway, my, my sister got me this for Christmas. Um, anyway, in the 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 it was a, the maybe homestead was an old farmhouse built by my great grandfather William Maybe 
in 1890. And a big two-story farmhouse. And in the attic, there was some plywood down where we could store things. And all, you know, the, like, in the winter, store the summer clothes there, and then vice versa in the summer, store the winter clothes up there. But it didn't have all plywood. There was, there was the, the rafters in the front, front part of the attic. And it was two weeks before moving, I found this National Geographic. And it was under, they had the um, insulation. And I noticed, like, I just noticed a little section of it in the, you know, in the insulations on top. Of it. And so, yeah, it's in, it's in, I would say, maybe like good condition. But I love the ads. Here, here it is, the classic. And Coca-Cola generally always had the back, back cover ad. And there it is. What a classic, classic Coca-Cola ad. And it says, relax, take it easy. Here's the coach. And, you know, maybe the guy looked like he struck out, you know. So, <laughs> here's the coach. Hey, kid, it's not so bad. Have a Coke. <laughs> hey, have a, so here's, a, here's the answer to the world's problems. Drink a Coca-Cola. <laughs> Great average. I worked in an ad agency for about 10 years. I know, I know how it's done. All subliminal. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, an ad for Hamilton Watches. The thousand clocks that keep Grand Central running right. Grand Central Station, I guess. Um, this is so delicate. There it is. Oh, let's see. He's got the guy. And he's got all his clocks. You know, and it's, there's the watches. So uh, get yourself a Hamilton watch. I don't even know if they're still in business. Uh, oh, Pennsylvania. Come to the cool playlands of Pennsylvania. Calling August vacationers in there. They got the, the lady in the bathing suit. And she's just a uh, single guy. She's waiting for you in Pennsylvania. And here's the here's here's young bride and the old man. What's this? She, she, she didn't marry him for his money. What are they selling? A Barbasol. <laughs> Barbasol. Oh, is that? That's a hair tonic or something, I think. Um, oh, it's a shaving cream. So it's not, it's out of a tube. Uh, here we go, Goodyear tires. This is heartwarming, all this stuff is so heartwarming. Here we go, there's, there's grandpa and the grandson. And what's he say here? In America, dot, 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 life is precious. Isn't that, I mean, this is real Americana here, you know. And what are they selling? Goodyear tires. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Grandpa likes to talk to his grandson about tires. Uh, let me see. Uh, ooh, this is nice. I like this. Gra I like what a nice weather tonight. They're playing under the lights. I guess this when baseball uh, night games were coming into vogue. But there's a great woodcut here. I love the, I love the graphics. The um, just the 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 setup. Forget the articles, but just the graphics were, were great in these old National Geographics. Here's when the, oh, this is like, this is like that episode of the Andy Griffith Show where um, Andy and Barney and, and Aunt B and Gomer and Goober and they all go to church and they got the guest minister and he says, remember the old, remember the old band concerts on Sunday night? Oh, they were so wonderful. The band concerts in the gazebo, and everyone they try to rebuild the gazebo. And he tries to get the band together. Aunt B and uh, what's her friend's name? Uh, I forget Aunt B's friend's name. Uh, Claire. They and they and, and even even Aunt, and even Aunt Opie's running around like a little nut, you know, kicking his friends together. Hmm. Um, Love Earl Grey. So here's a here's the band. This is what this is what Andy and Bonnie were shooting for. And of course, it didn't come to pass. They, uh, uh, if I remember right, uh, Barney and Gomer have this argument that neither one of them wanted to go under the 
all gazebo to fix it because there might be spiders and snakes underneath there. That's what else we got here. Uh, this is from Metropolitan Life Insurance. And the, uh, the line reads, I forget, I, well, 10 years in advertising, I forget what they call this, the, the, the main line. A lot of heart trouble isn't. <laughs> guys having a heart attack here. I mean, it's not funny, but, you know, what, the, the motivation is, you know, this is a metropolitan life insurance. You know, they sure don't want you to pass away middle age. You know, just keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Just keep sending the premiums. Uh, what we, ooh, how a curious grass saved the city of Provincetown. Some little story here, but I like this uh, drawing here. And the main article in this issue is West Virginia, colon, treasure chest of industry. If you are watching my YouTube for the first time, I love West Virginia. I'm from Jersey, and Jersey's first in my book, and West Virginia's second. Sorry, Florida. <laughs> here it is. Oh, where is it? Here. I mean, look at the graphics on this. Just beautiful. I guess some photos of West Virginia in 1940. Um, oh, this is sad. Um, I guess it was a, an explosion in a gas. That's sad. Explosion in a gas mine. That's sad. That's that's sad. That makes me sad. Uh, here's Pop. He's changing the tire. Oh, pull over, said the state trooper near Fairmont, and I'll change your tire. <laughs> yeah, right. After I give you, and then I'll give you a ticket. And it's funny, they got the, they got the kid, the kid, the kid is checking out the state trooper's motorcycle, you know? In real life, you know, the state trooper say, I'm not against police, but you know, in real life, the state trooper say, hey, kid, get away from that motorcycle. Ooh, a map of West Virginia. See, see West Virginia is unique. And uh, they call this, they call this the Northern Panhandle, and it's, and it's sandwiched between Pennsylvania and Ohio. It's like this little stretch of land. And it's, you know, it's like this tiny stretch of land. I mean... Uh, going across, that is. And uh, here is the, um, what I love. Uh, I love the whole state. But Dan and I used to traverse through here a lot. Um, here is uh, the eastern, the eastern panhandle here. Martinsburg, Inwood. Um, I'm working with Charlestown. Um, Anyway, uh, this area here, uh, this Eastern Panhandle, it's exploded. I haven't been up there in about five, six years through there. Uh, go, sometimes we take Route 11 going to New Jersey, sometimes Route 81, sometimes Route 9. You know, it's interesting. Um, what's this now? Uh, when the Potomac's break through the Blue Ridge ramparts, nestles Harper's Ferry. Oh, wow, this is Harper's Ferry here. I don't want this cover to rip. There it is, Harper's Ferry. Uh, John Brown had his insur insurrection, or his, his, uh, his uh, what do you call it? Uh, Erie Clippers with section attachments saved thousands of socks daily. Wow, that's just sick. These poor ladies, they worked hard. There it is. There's sewing socks there. They, they worked hard. They, they really, I mean, I'm, I'm actually serious. Uh, this is kind of down home. Run out in the backyard, son, and get a scuttle of coal. I just, I, there's, a do, there's a dog in the front yard and the two, oh, th this is so heartwarming. There it is, you know. There's, there's got the dog in the front yard. It's, there's a mountain in the backyard. There's pop on the on the 
on the, on the chair, porch chair, and the two sons, you know, sitting there on the porch. Son, go get a, get, go, go get me some coal, you know. It's kind of very heartwarming. So, and on and on it goes. Uh, from his cab, upper left, the craneman sets a big engine on its wheels as easily as a boy assembles a toy train. Whoa, they're building a train. An engine, you know? Engine, engine number nine, coming down the railroad line. Put in the comments if you know who wrote and sang this song. Engine, engine number nine, coming down the railroad line. Now there it is. There's a train engine being built. I tell you, see, I tell you, you know, it's like a, you know, it's like watching Richard May presents is like watching is like taking a, a college course on Americana. <laughs> hey, the kids are bobbing for apples. That's cute. Yeah, they are bobbing for apples in West Virginia. Kind of. A, it's also heartwarming. 1940 West Virginia. Here, here is the. The capital of West Virginia. Now, here's an interesting story. Uh, Dad and I were traversing all through West Virginia, and there was a Holiday Inn. This is a canal. This is not a river. It's a canal. And these big barges, these big, uh, almost like, well, I guess canal boats are like almost like tugboats. They, they, they pull these big barges of coal down this canal. Well, just in that direction, I don't know that would that be north or south or whatever, there's the state capitol, but up that way, because if we came down, the state capitol was on the left. Uh, we stayed at a Holiday Inn, and there's a boat, you know, tourist kind of thing, and we took the boat down the canal, and we actually went by the, the, uh, the capitol building. It was kind of a nice moment. It was a brown and... 2000. It was 23 years ago. Wow. I think it was year 2000. I'm getting old. Wow, it seems like yesterday. There's a fellow, uh, like a minstrel, he charms with bow and smile at a Rent Cerverte concert. Yeah. There's a West Virginia chap playing the violin. Yeah. Well, there's about a uh, hundred more. Oh, this is it. I'm going to end on this one. Old world dress clings to the new in Helvetia. All right, all right. This is this. There's an older chap all dressed up for church. Now, here is uh, a family in their home. He's a lumberman. And uh, welcome the author. Oh, this is the author himself. They w they welcomed him in, in their home, and they were real nice to him. And the, the story goes. That's the real West Virginia. That just the, um, oh, almost makes me almost makes me cry. It's so down home, so honest, so oh, just. I mean, you can't you can't be pretentious. You know, you this is real. You know, but there's about another hundred. I know why Barney Fife loved that National Geographic. It's so interesting. But I'm going to put a little marker here. I got a piece of paper here. I'm in the moment. I'm tearing a piece of paper here. <laughs> Nothing fancy about Richard Maybe Presents. <laughs> We're about as down home as you can get. So I put the, put the marker there. So, you know, I'm not telling you a tall tale. And I might come back to this one. Uh, you know, National Geographic magazine, recommended by Andy Taylor and Barney Fife. A lot of people say Andy Griffith in reference to Andy's character, but actually it was Andy Taylor. So that's going to wrap it up. Um, um, I don't know what else to say. Um, it's Thursday night. February 9th, 2023, been here 15 years. About 90% of the people 
No, maybe, maybe um, I don't want to exaggerate. 75% of the people in the three, the three streets um, north of me and the three streets south of me, I would say maybe even 80% um, no longer live in that house. And some of the homes are now on third, the third and fourth generation, you know, third and fourth people, third and fourth residents, you know, in that particular house. So in my neighborhood, um, some of the people don't even know my name and they, they call me the dog walker. And that bothered me for a while, but um, actually, actually, in a way, it's a compliment. I, I got, you know, I walk dogs. <laughs> so, so, this was fun. A little improv, just sitting down and chatting. It was kind of fun. So, stay happy, stay positive, stay healthy. This is, oh, hit the like button. Even if you didn't like this, even if you didn't like this episode, hit the like button. <laughs> you will hit the like button. You will hit the like button. Um, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. So uh, without further ado, I'll sign off. And um, happy trails.